How are you? Today, I've got my sneaky cue. It's a, a one piece ash. It's got a, the, the ash goes all the way to the end. And this is just spliced over the top of the wood. This is ebony and this is maple. It's a bit battered at the end, but I found it. I found it in a, an old social club. No one was using it. It's a beautiful queue. I had a, a ferrule put on in a tip. I've had this many, many, many years now. Um, probably 15, 20 years. And I found it free of charge. So yeah, I'm just going to show you quickly. If your queue ever gets a bit sticky and you're not sure what to do, this this is what I do. If you take a some sandpaper, I've got a 120 grit, just a nice fine sandpaper. You don't want it too too smooth. You do want to take a little bit off. You just want to go up and down your queue just to take the outer surface off. Obviously if you use a really rough sandpaper and you do it regularly, you're gonna have no cute back. But it's just light pressure just to just to rough the edge up and take a bit of the, the surface off. You'll be able to see on the on the uh, sandpaper the dirt coming off. So just do that all the way along the queue. See as I'm going up and down I'm turning the queue at the same time. Because I'm only obviously hitting it this side. So you're going to turn the queue, but as you go up, just give it a little turn, just up and down. Just like that. It is literally, just take the top little bit off. Go all the way down to the bottom. Like so. You may as well do the handle as well. Go all the way down to the bottom. And if your cue is a bit sticky and it's maybe, you know, absorbed some sweat and, and stuff, this will uh, make it lovely, lovely and smooth. So you can, you can play your snooker without it sticking to your, your bridge finger when you cue. So I've done that. Now you'll, you'll feel that smoother already. Now what we do, I've got, where have I put it? Just two seconds. <laughs> Back, come back. Just a, a kitchen sponge, wet it, squeeze it out as much as you can. It is literally, you know, it is damp, it's not wet. And now you're going to just go over the queue again, just up and down like that. You might actually be able to see the grain now, really nice grain on this queue. Anyway, so. Just do that up and down, turning it as you go again, swiveling it in your hand, all the way down to the bottom, all the way to the bottom. You're just wiping off any dirt that was on it and you're just getting rid of any any minute wood particles, you know, sawdust that you, you've ground off. And then just put that aside for a minute, because uh, that'll dry in no time. As long as you, your sponge was completely and almost dry. And what we're going to do, as I always do, I'm going to put some beeswax on it. It's a natural... Uh, well, beeswax comes from bees, doesn't it? It's very good for protecting wood. Now the idea is you, you put a coat on, you leave it for 15 minutes, then you buff it off with a nice soft cloth. And then if you want to put another application on, you're going to have to wait two hours. And then you put another application on and then wait 15 minutes and buff it off. I mean, you could do it as many times as you like. Um, obviously, the more of this you put on, within reason, the more coat you put on, the more it's going to protect the wood. It's going to seep into the wood, protect it from, from everyday grime or, you know, that sort of thing. So this is a superior blend of waxes, nourishes, feeds and protects fine interior wood. It's designed for interior wood. This is a, a Jacobean dark oak. 
but there are other colours available. Lighter, dark. You can see it is quite dark. But um, yeah, so what I'll do now, I'll just put a bit of this. This is dry now. It only took a minute to dry. So I've got myself a, a lint free cloth. That is a cloth that isn't going to, loads of bits come off it, little bits of uh, cloth and fabric. That's not what you want. So just fold it up, get yourself a nice little corner. Dip it in the beeswax, not too much, you don't need a hell of a lot, just sort of, or maybe a bit too much, you know, and then this is what you want to do. Take this, put it on your cue, you need a bit more, you'll, you'll know how much to put on and how much not to put on, just you need to give it a good coating. Go all the way up to the ferrule, like so. It doesn't matter if you put a bit too much on because once it's dried, you're going to buff it off anyway. So, so I mean, don't gloop it on there. You don't want big lumps of on there. But so long as you've uh, got a nice coating on there, that's pretty much all you need. I'll just rest that there, that'll be nicely, and then I can do the same again here. It's nice and steady. Now you'll be able to see the, the bit I haven't done and the nice bit I have done. A bit more. There's different woods all there. Different woods will soak it up quicker, I suppose. You know, thinner grain woods and softer woods will soak it up quicker than uh, than a hard wood. This is um, this is ash, which is which is pretty much the most common wood, as far as I know, that sneaker shoes are made of. Well, certainly when this was made, anyway. I mean, I have used maple cues once or twice, but I don't like them. I don't like them, there's no grain on it, they look horrible, it's like a horrible, it's this sort of wood. This wood here, there's no, there's no appealing grain to it or, and uh, it does seem to absorb moisture and it, it gets sticky and clammy on your finger. When you, when you're trying to run the cue across your, across your finger, it, it's not very pleasant. I've always preferred ash. I've never ever even owned a two-piece queue i just don't like two-piece queues you know i'd much rather have one solid piece of wood which uh it gives you a better strike on the ball and uh, it just gives you a better strike on the ball because it's a solid piece of wood there's no man-made joint i've been cutting off and some stupid joint then putting it which which does my head in i just don't like them so we're just going to finish off putting some of that on there doesn't matter if it isn't a completely even coat because as long as it's all got a, a decent covering once once it's dried in 15 minutes and uh when you come to buff it off um it's going to look very nice. So I'll just, just do the very tip of the cue, like so. Okay. It can be a bit messy, but um, don't worry about that too much. Seems to me a lot of the best things in life are messy, if you know what I mean. Okay, so I've got some on my fingers, as you can see, but I'm not bothered. So, once all that's done, I'm just going to touch that bit up that's been touching that. Once that's done, just put that to one side. Now I've got to leave that for 15 minutes. Just going to use a bit of toilet paper there just to wipe the fingers. So, leave that for 15 minutes and then I'll buff it off. And um, actually, I'll do a quick video of me buffing it off in, in 15 minutes' time or so. We'll see what it looks like, and then I will probably put another coat on. Well, I hope that's been helpful to someone. Uh, 
how to look after and maintain your, your snooker cue or pull cue if you use a pull cue. So, good stuff. Thank you. Bye for now.